we've placed a naked light at the top of the lighthouse. So that light up there is a bit of a comparison test. From across the bay, you can see that our bulb isn't nearly as strong as the bright flash of the modern lighthouse's beam. But using a bulb with the same strength as our test light, can the Fresnel lens match that modern technology? <laughs> here it comes. What I'm seeing down here is nothing compared to what the lens is projecting out across the horizon. The Fresnel lens concentrates the strength of the light by focusing its rays into a sweeping, powerful beam, creating a bright flash as it crosses our vision. That beam is visible from 25 miles away, making it more than a match for the modern light beside it. But how does this lens magnify the power of the light so greatly? Here, I have a laser. Let's turn that on. Now, that single beam represents a single ray of light, which heads off in a very specific direction. And I have here two more lasers, which I'm going to set up heading out in random directions. Let's pop one out there. And this one out here representing light beams from a light source that are going off in all different directions. But I want them to head out to sea between my two goalposts to line up with this laser beam here. So I bring in the prisms. So with my two light sources here going through prisms, I've got a more intense light heading in that direction. And in a lighthouse, the Fresnel lens is made up of loads and loads of prisms all around that light source to focus and concentrate the light energy in one direction so that it can be seen for miles and miles heading out to sea. Robert Stevenson passed away in 1850, but he left behind him a dynasty of talented engineers and his family continued his remarkable work on the Northern Lighthouses. But they had a complex new problem. These phenomenal lenses were incredibly heavy. Turning them created enormous friction. Wheels and bearings had to be constantly replaced, and they could only rotate at slow speeds. It was nearly 70 years before a solution was put into practice. And I've come here to the National Maritime Museum of Ireland to see it for myself. Oh, wow. To come into an old church and be confronted with this. I have seen the light. Installed at Dublin's Bailey Lighthouse in 1902, this Fresnel lens weighs in at a whopping 10 tonnes. But that's not actually what I've come here to see. <laughs> it's quite hard to take this all in. I mean, you've obviously got the enormous lens on the top up here, but what you can't see in here, which is equally fascinating, is this, there's a giant donut-shaped trough or basin in here that's filled with mercury. And then the lens is attached to a great big donut-shaped ring which then sits on top of that mercury. Nigel Teggin is a volunteer curator here at the museum. Having invented, really, the Fresnel lens, with that came another problem as to how you're going to manoeuvre this, this great big weight. Yes, that's true. So they came up with the idea of floating it in mercury. And in that optic there, we have 25 pints thereabouts of mercury. And uh, I'm, tr I'm, trying, I'm trying to imagine that lined up on a bar, 25 pints of mercury. Well, you wouldn't carry it very far. No. The mercury bath had a twofold advantage. It could carry more weight and turn it more efficiently. Faster rotation allowed flash patterns to speed up and lighthouses could be recognised far more quickly. Exposure to mercury can cause serious health problems, but under laboratory conditions at Aberdeen University, I'm getting a closer look at what makes it so special. So tell me a little bit about 
the properties of mercury. It's a bit of a unique metal, isn't it? Yeah, it's you know nearly 14 times kind of as dense as water. Yeah, that's what I was hoping for. There's, there's a mass to that. You can feel the momentum as you move it. I mean, it, oh, that is weird because it's so heavy, but it's a liquid. That is so odd. So as we're pouring it, we will have to be careful um, and do it quite slowly, just so it doesn't break the bottom of the beaker too. So the way. But its density was only one advantage of this fascinating material. Another thing that was crucially important for lighthouses was the fact that it was virtually frictionless. Is that is that true? Um, what, what what makes mercury? What gives mercury that kind of character? Yeah, so. First of all, it's a liquid, so there's always going to be the less sort of kind of friction. Um, and it's also got a really high surface tension as well. Time to compare mercury to water. So, whichever is most dense. Will sink. So there we go. The golf ball is denser than water. Yeah. I'll still pellet here. <laughs> Sinks like a stone. But how do they behave in mercury? <laughs> it's so weird. That is so odd. Try push it down as well. And... Try push it down? Yeah, of course, go for it. And then I'm not going to let go of it, but it wants to it just pop straight back up. Right. And now for the same test with the steel pellet. Oh, wow. It's just bobbing away. Yeah. A toy boat on a lake. It's quite interesting to see a metal supported by another metal. You can imagine scaling this up to the size of the, those mercury troughs they That's had it. in the lighthouses, and you could start to understand how they could support tons of weight of that glass on those lenses yeah. above. But mercury is toxic, and interacting with it was another occupational hazard for lighthouse keepers in a difficult and dangerous job.